Hey there, Mike here at Ideal Food. I wanted to let you know that this system I built was the very first system I ever did build and it was quite a big task. Sitting there and I didn't know what I was doing and I had never had any experience with aeroponic tower gardening. This is built out of rain gutter downspout. It's got 27 tubes plus the PVC at the end is also flower pots. But my main problem is I'm having water on the floor. The system does not leak when there's no plants in it, but once I put plants in it, the leaves and everything seems to divert the water from going into the drain system and flowing back into my sump. So what I'm doing is I'm fixing that. My sump is off to the side here, and I'm gonna place my sump, as you can see, with three of these containers, and I'm gonna run them all along the bottom. So any water that drips will drip onto the lids, and then I'm gonna have a hole drilled that will go through some filtered material so no debris gets into my water. So let's get started. I'm gonna rebuild the bottom of this, and I'm gonna be rebuilding the top also as I have water problem and keeping it flowing correctly and keeping the plants watered. So instead of using valves, I'm going to trip lines. I'll let you know how it works, but I am having some failures due to water not being consistent, and I'm going to fix that ASAP. The first part of this rebuild is going to be shutting the motor off, which I'm going to do right now. For safety reasons, I have a switch hardwired to my motor. It's just the proper way to uh, use it, and I just turn my switch off and I'm ready to start replumbing my system. I'm just letting the system drain out as there's some water running out from the tubes. And as soon as the whole thing drains and there's nothing else coming through here, I'll start cutting my pipe apart and get ready to be rebuilt. Got the system shut down. And I'm going to start rebuilding it shortly. I have to cut all my pipes apart. And I have to rerun the motor to the new reservoir. Okay, the first step is to place my new sump where I want it. This is going to go the first one. That goes right here. And now I have to get the motor to suck in and out of there. So I have to remove my pipes that I have, and I'm gonna do that right now, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, as you can see, I have my intake for my motor is right here. This is my extra water reserve that I feed back into the sump that I don't want going to my system. So what I wanna do is remove this right here, and this has to be removed and put over here. So I'm going to move that to the new sump. To cut this, I'm going to use my trusty cutters for my PVC pipe. If you don't have these, these are great. What I'm going to do is I just want to cut this where I can get another fitting on top and move it over to the other pipe. So I want to cut this right about here. These take a little bit of arm muscle, but it's easier than using a saw. Not supposed to cut that way, it's supposed to cut. That actually broke, guys. That's from the sun hitting it, it makes it brittle. I have the sun coming through my window and hitting the pipe. I have my main return going to the motor and it is into my new sump. And I'll show you how I put a little end cap on that so it doesn't collect debris and stuff. And it's off the old sump. Now I gotta move this piece, which is the extra return which is basically a regulating valve so I can control the amount of pressure that goes through my aeroponic tower garden system so that it's not so ridiculous. But this motor has plenty of power to power many systems. Okay, I now have my three bins placed under my system to catch any excess water runoff. This is the main bin where the motor takes the water in and out of. What I will do is add water to each of these bins so they're pretty equal in height, and I will put a siphon hose between them 
so all the water will circulate through the pump. Okay, I got my new sump hooked up. It is running. I will have to add a few things yet so all the water circulates through all the bins evenly. So this is now my sump over here. I will run this hose that you see right here to that last bin so the water flowing in goes in there and then it will pass through all three bins so I have constant circulation. I just need to get some piping, PVC pipe, to create a couple siphon hoses. I found these little snaps because my containers were touching each other. Makes it so I can't remove the lids. So I'm going to cut these off. Pretty simple. I just used a pair of snips. And I cut that little clip off so I can take the lids on and off easily. Otherwise, I can't get them off. I wanted to show you how I got the siphon started. All I do is take the pipe, the PVC pipe, and I submerge it. And I hold my hand over one end and I just pull it over and it'll start siphoning the water over to this side here. It's that easy. That connects these two containers and kind of makes them one system. Now, all these will level to the same height and I'll run the water that's coming out of this system to the last one and it'll feed through all of them. And this way I'll always have my water circulating, nothing sitting still, and all three of my 40 gallon bins are being used. I doubt very many people will build a system quite this big, but if you feel inspired to, make sure to get your siphon started. You fill this bin right here higher than the other bin you're going to, so that when you start to siphon, there's enough suction through to vacuum all the air out of your line so that you have a queen siphon. As you can see, all these containers are taken on the same height. I've got my new sump all together with my siphon hoses. So all of them will feed to each other. Only thing left is to run my outtake to the very last bin. So the water circulates through all three bins and no water is sitting dormant or not movement or sitting stagnant. First step in rebuilding my monster aeroponic tower garden. I got my sump now underneath it. I got a couple of holes drilled in each bin. So if water drips out, it just drains right back in. And I don't have to worry about water on my floor anymore. I may even be able to open up my valves and just let them flow and I might be able to use them due to it doesn't matter if it flows too fast anymore. The water is just going to be recaptured and sent back up the system. And that is another cucumber hanging from my ceiling. I've been getting a lot of them. And I do have a lemon cucumber growing, which I showed you the other day. It's definitely getting there. It's one of my favorite cucumbers. I did have some problems with this system. Water on the floor, the valves getting clogged, not running all the time because I was trying to make them slow drip so I didn't get water on the floor. Well, I added my new sumps. Now I don't care if water leaks out of them. It's going right back into the sumps. And I think maybe now I can use my valves because I can open them up and let them flow. I don't have to worry about controlling them to an exact flow so I didn't end up losing all my water. Now that I believe I've made the corrections needed so I won't have the same problems I've been having and I'll stop losing plants, it's a lot of work to get them growing from seedlings I've been doing really well and come down and see them completely wilted because your water system failed. Well, I'm correcting that. So, next step is I'm going to do maintenance on this side. I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to get ready for a whole new crop. The plants do get old eventually and they do need to be replaced. And this system is at pretty much its limit of growth. It's given me a ton of food. And the other side right now is getting ready to give me my next batch of food while I get this one ready for the next batch of food. I have a cycle going and it's working great. As I said, I had problems with my flow, caused some of my plants to die. I believe I fixed all those things. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. Mike out.